Good morning, church. On behalf of Pastor Al and River Life, I'd like to welcome you this morning. Thank you for joining us and continue to pray for Pastor Al as uh, they uh, minister and uh, visit the Philippines. Uh, before we, we begin, let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this time and this opportunity that we can gather under this one roof, Lord, to give glory and honor to your name. Father, we pray that the uh, song that we sing, the uh, uh, verses that we read, Lord God, even our tithes and offering, brought glory and honor to your name. That is our desire today, Lord, to bring you glory, to bring you honor, Lord. And I pray, Lord God, that you give us, Lord, um, wisdom today. Give me wisdom, Lord. And give me, Lord, the words to say to encourage your people, Lord. Lord, I, I thank you that your word is alive, Father God. And I thank you, Lord God, that, that it will going to accomplish its purpose, Lord God, in my life and the life of my brothers and sisters today. Lord, be with us. Holy Spirit, be with us, Lord. We give you, Lord, full reign and control of their service, Lord, that in everything that we do may bring glory and honor to your name, in your name alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church, and thank you for those that are first time um, visiting us here today. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Pastor Al is in the Philippines uh, with Sister Rella, so please bear with us, bear with me today. Um, this morning, and, the, uh, and actually the next three Sundays, we are going to uh, talk about um, a message about the life of Joseph. You know, I love how the Bible uh, not only contains the, the word and commands from God, but it also contains our recorded stories in real life of people, their experiences, the people who choose to obey God. And sadly, it also contains the people who uh, choose to disobey uh, his word and command. So I choose Joseph, we choose Joseph today, uh, the leadership, because it's a good example for those who obeyed uh, God's command and fulfilled his calling. Uh, in the next th uh, three weeks, I'm going to give the overview and some uh, key takeaways today. Uh, next week, Brother Clay, and then finally, Pastor Al will be back here. So the, the key verse today, if you uh, notice it, this is after all the hardship and experience that uh, Joseph had uh, during his captivity, his uh, serving. And this is the time that he was uh, elevated to be the second um, leader, numbers uh, second to uh, uh, Pharaoh, and he is managing all the resources of Egypt. Why did I choose that? Because if you are like my wife, she doesn't want the, uh, you know, the climax and the hardship and everything. She wants to know, did, did he survive? What's the ending, you know? So for you, those of you who especially who haven't uh, read uh, the uh, life of story of Joseph, this is your, uh, the, this is the highlight. He survived. He, he became the number two in Egypt. And he had like two sons, uh, which uh, he, named, he named them in particular because of his experiences with the Lord. Uh, so we're not going to read the uh, 13 or so chaps, chapters today. And I encourage everyone uh, that during your devotion time, uh, read uh, Genesis 37. It's, uh, you can skip 38 and then go through up to 50. And um, we, can, we can actually read that. And then by the end, uh, we're done with the, with the time. So I'm okay with that too. Um, if you notice the, the chapter, if, uh, 37, it begins with uh, showing the conflict within the family. His brother hated uh, Joseph, you know, but prior to that, it shows the relationship between uh, Leah and Rachel that are very conflicting with each other. And also it shows uh, J uh, Jacob's uh, favoritism with Leah, or no, with Rachel, and with his son Joseph. And I believe the way the family dynamics, how it was uh, created, it affected how uh, the brothers felt about Joseph. Uh, the, the verse says they hated him so much that they could not speak 
peacefully to him. So in a natural, we would say that this is not ideal family. Can we all, um, can we all like uh, agree to that, that even our family is not ideal family to be used by God? But it, thank God that it is not us. It is God who's making the way. And we'll see that as through, throughout this chapter. And also the other thing that I like with this um, is with, uh, Joseph's story. If you all remember, uh, I uh, share about the uh, life of Jonah before. Yeah, I remember that. That we all kind of like be like Jonah and uh, uh, go, go somewhere else instead of preaching here. Uh, and if, if you look at that, Jonah want to, let me see if this one works. Yes. Yeah, there you go. So compared to Joseph, Jonah has a direct calling from the Lord. He has a direct message from God. God told him, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. And again, God told to uh, Noah the second time when, um, after all the troubles. But Joseph's dream is somewhat vague, right? He just had a dream. There's no de detail, no audible voice. That is, God is going to use him uh, for something great. He doesn't know how. He doesn't know uh, when. And there's a lot of unknowns, right? And it seemed to impossible during that time. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Joseph or any one of them uh, will think about, you know, having the famine going to affect their lands. Because at that time, they're living in plenty. And their uh, family is quite well. If you look on uh, Exodus or Genesis 30, 43, it says, Thus the man, this is Jacob, increased greatly and had large flocks, female servants and male servants, and camels and don donkeys. So at that time, uh, Joseph really has no idea how God is going to use the him. He just had a dream, and he had uh, dreamed it twice, so he knew that something is going to happen. So I'm going to pause and say you this. It doesn't matter how and where we are called, for the body has many different parts. So you, you can be... Uh, you know, you can be in the kitchen like Atiloida and the team serving them. Or you can be, you know, uh, like the media team uh, working their magic at the back. Or you can be the greeters team. It doesn't matter. Because as part of the body of Christ, we have a, lot, a different responsibility. First Corinthians 12, 2 says... There is one body, but it has many parts. But all its many parts make up one body. It is the same with Christ. So when, I, well, when I, we were in Pennsylvania since 2005, uh, my ministry there is to vacuum the, the church. And I'm doing that for many, many years, and I love it. I don't have to face anyone. I can vacuum on Friday night, Saturday morning, nobody there. I love it. When I joined uh, Culver, uh, River Life, I was in the back doing my uh, video, and I love it too. And then now, Pastor Lake. <laughs> but it is not matter how we are called. What matters is how we respond. I want to share Samuel, uh, 1 Samuel 15:22. But Samuel replied, what pleases the Lord more, burnt offerings and sacrifices, or obeying the Lord? It's better to obey than to offer a sacrifice. It's better to do what it says than to offer the fat of rams. And so uh, as I continued with my testimony, uh, as like I said, I don't want to be uh, standing in front, much more uh, talking and, and uh, sharing the word. And you know where I came from in the Philippines, sometimes we pronounce uh, words differently, like, right? Sheila, Shela, 
How did, how did I uh, do that last time? And the problem with that is, I know my mind is saying it's wrong, but my tongue is like locked into it. So the whole time that I'm praying for uh, Joey and Shella, last time, I couldn't. But thank you all for not laughing me at the time. You can laugh now. I, I got, got over it. But yeah. And the first time that I stand here, I really, um, my, my heartbeat is high and I'm sweating. But I, I'd like to be obedient to my pastor. And I believe I'd like, uh, it's obedience to God as well. So I am here not because of my um, ability to uh, preach the gospel. I am here not because of my own uh, confidence in myself or even, you know, my, my knowledge uh, with the Word of God. But I'm here uh, ready to say yes to the Lord, Amen. to obedience to His Word. Okay, the, the other thing that I like uh, with this uh, Joseph story is the impossibility of his calling in the natural. In Jewish, uh, Jewish, in Jewish culture, the firstborn son is the heir, leader of his house. And Joseph is way down the line. And the other one is he is 17 years old. He is but a boy. If you look on the same um, experience, Jeremiah was believed to, to be 20 years old when God called him to be a prophet. So l let us go there. Uh, Jeremiah 1, 4 to 8. And now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you to be a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a youth. For to all of wh to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. In short, God will equip us to accomplish what he called us to do. Jeremiah was equipped with wisdom and words to say to his people. The words are directly from God. And in Joseph's case, experiences in life equipped him for his calling. Our calling is unique, each one of us. You can do somewhere else. You can, um, as I said earlier, we are part of one body. We have different function. Our calling, calling is unique. But it's all to accomplish the purpose uh, that God has given us, to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. That is our main purpose. And the other one that I like with this uh, Joseph story is the pattern of life's experience can be compared to us. He has the ex extreme experience. But if you look at the pattern, the ups and downs, you know, um, family disunity, um, you know, him being in the pit and then working uh, to get out of the pit to, to become like, you know, second in Potiphar's house and then back in the pit again. And then finally elevating into uh, in the position that uh, he, he was in. So if you look on the, uh, on the um, experience of Joseph, you can certainly assess, you know, Maybe you are on the pit experience right now. Or maybe you are on the uh, top of your accomplishments in life. Hold on to that. I think we are going to say, uh, see how uh, we can apply Joseph's life in whatever situation and whatever uh, stages of life we are in. So uh, as we go to, this, um, to his life and to his story, I'd like to share uh, some uh, five key takeaways uh, from his life. As I said, uh, Brother Clay will go uh, deeper next week and uh, Pastor Al, of course. And uh, if you can go back to the uh, main passage. Yeah. 
So on, on, on our main passage, uh, this is after, as I said before, this is after all the hardship that he has. And the uh, chapter 41, uh, when he um, forgave his brother and sis, uh, brothers. And then uh, on, on chapter 50, when his brothers repented. So key takeaway that I'd like to um, share right now is number one. If we go back to uh, verse 37, um, 37 two. It says, Joseph, be, being 17 years old, was pasturing the flock with his brothers. He was a boy with sons of Bilba and Silpha, and his, father, uh, his father's wife. And Joseph brought bad report to them, to their father. I believe that the bad report that uh, says here is not a telltale. He is saying, you know, um, that these uh, other brothers are not doing what his father commanded them to be. So the point number one that I have is Joseph positioned himself for God's favor and blessings as shown in his character, even at an early age. At this time, Joseph was 17 years old, and he cannot withstand the fact, uh, the, the, the fact that his brothers are working uh, contrary to what his father, uh, father has directed him, them to be. His life is uh, full of obedience to his father as shown throughout uh, the, the next verses that we are going to uh, read. Uh, his obedience to his father was courageous and complete. Well, in verse 37, 17, um, when his father told him to go and see his brothers uh, attending the ship and uh, to bring uh, the word back to him, and with, when he didn't uh, find him on those uh, locations that they were supposed to be, he sought them af even after father to fulfill his God's, uh, father's command. Uh, 37, 7 said, and the man said, they have gone away, for I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. It is a simple uh, statement there, but if you search on uh, the uh, information, the facts, the valley of Hebron to Shechem, Shechem, Seashells, seashells, oh, it is seashore. <laughs> it's about 50 miles. And Dothan was another 50, 15 miles north. So in the natural, you know, if you drive or walk or, you know, ride a donkey for 50 miles and they're not there, I, I would just go back. How many of you are, you're, in, you're like, you know, five, five miles away, two miles away from, uh, let's say, picking up your kids from school? And you came in there, and they're not there. It's like, I'm going to leave you. <laughs> you cannot, you know, just wait five minutes, ten minutes. See, so you see how uh, the character of Joseph at an early age, you know, not finding his brothers on the place that they're supposed to be. He traveled 15 miles north, farther, just to fulfill the command by his father. You see the life of obedience that he has showing in this passage. And this is like happening, you know, in his home, in, the, in his comfort zone. And the other thing is, you know, this life of obedi obedience, his, uh, his positioning himself in God's favor and blessings is not only in his hometown, but outside his home. We're going to find it farther, uh, you'll find it farther in um, when he was in Potiphar's house, how he responded, his attitude towards temptation to sin uh, against uh, Potiphar's wife, because he recognized that even though he is like number one in the house, his success was from the Lord. Part of the verse 39 says, you know, when all these things happening, his answer is like, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? You know, he is going, the, the, the uh, temptation is against his master. But since he recognized that all that he has, the success that he has, where he in, in, in that position right now, 
it is because of his God. And doing such a thing is not against his master, not against with everyone, but against mostly against his God. And this should be our attitude. This should be our attitude that prevents us from sinning and to strive to live a holy life. It is not because we sin for, uh, against our wife, against our children, against the people that we love, but against the God that we serve. And also, I'd like to point here that, you know, uh, Joseph's attitude towards Potiphar's wife, towards the cupbearer, and towards his brothers. When he was like number two in command in, in uh, Egypt, he can just go back and take revenge on everyone, right? Cupbearer, you forget about me for two years. I helped you to be in that place, or I interpreted your dreams. But otherwise, wife, you caused me to be in the pit, in the dungeon. So he can do revenge. And sadly, oftentimes, we won't stop people like us, you know, in the natural. We won't stop until we can get even to those who wronged us, right? So as I say that, you know, this life example of Joseph should tell us and help to remind us, you know, that all these things that's happening to us is from the Lord, and how we respond to it will, should be bringing glory and honor back to him. Uh, key takeaway number two that I would like to point out is uh, waiting on the Lord for appointed time on a given dreams and visions. Uh, Joseph did not ask God for clarity on his dreams, right, and how it will unfold. He let his brothers interpret them. And this is contrary to Jeremiah's uh, response when God called him to become a prophet at an early age. Do you know that God is not going to be mad at you when you ask him for direction, when you ask him for confirmation? His word is available to us and for each one of us, and it can be used for confirmation, for trainings, for everything. It is our it is the word of God who can guide us in everything. I'd like to point out Habakkuk 2.3. It says, first, still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. It, if it seems slow, wait for it. It will, surely, it will surely come. It will not delay. If you receive a God-given dreams and visions, wait for it. Wait for the appointed time. Because you know what? You probably are not ready. I am especially talking to those uh, that are first um, uh, who accepted the Lord uh, in their life, like just recently. I know that you are eager to, um, to serve the Lord with all your heart. You have vision and dreams that comes from God. I, 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 um, I know that. But wait for it. Wait for the appointed time. You, the people and friends and family that you have may not be ready. As uh, we can see on Joseph's life, even his fathers and mothers are not ready. Because they don't have the details. They haven't waited on the Lord. They haven't waited on the details from the Lord. But of course, there are times that we have to obey instantly. We, we always, the key takeaway here, we, we always have to ask for wisdom. For discernment from God. I remember um, when I, I, um, I shared that uh, we were in a part of a church in Pennsylvania, and uh, I'd like to share Pastor Farina's uh, vision uh, for Calvary at that time. They were in the other part of the, uh, of the location, and at that time they're praying for a church or a place, and Pastor Farina has a vision that uh, this place, it's a center or corner of everyone. It is an active uh, location with a lot of, I think Acme was uh, uh, there at the time. And on Sundays, like uh, buses are being shipped there for uh, bingo. But he has a vision that the place will become a place of worship. He saw, he saw these people that coming in there, not for bingo, but for worshiping the Lord and sharing with one another. But he kept, kept the vision 
to, his, uh, to, his, to himself for eight years. But what he did and Sister Farina did is every Sunday after church, they drive to the place and pray for the place, day after, uh, Sunday after Sunday, until the appointed time that came in and they were able to um, take possession of the land. And now uh, this is the place that uh, we're part in, in Pennsylvania as well when we're there. Um, key takeaway number three is God is in control. Number one, God protected Joseph from his siblings' hatred. You know the time when they say, uh, we're going to kill him? Yeah, they're going to kill him. <laughs> it, everyone there is like, you know, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth kind of uh, uh, law that they have. Genesis 37, 20, 21 says, Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we will say that a fierce animal has devoured him, and we will see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he rescued him out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. So God uses even, you know, the, the, the people that hates him, one of his brothers, to rescue him from everyone else, from the sure um, end of his life at the time. So God protected him from uh, his siblings' hatred. The other one is God protected jo Joseph from the pit. Genesis 37, 24 says, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. You know the pit called a cistern. They, they dug it to collect water. So in case uh, during the drought, they have like stored water there for their animals, and, uh, for their flocks and everything. But they throw him on a pit and the Bible um, included the pit was empty. There was no water in it. I believe God is in control even in the pit. So even in your own pit, pit situation right now, we know that God is still in control. Amen. The other one is from Potiphar's house. Genesis 39, 19 says, As soon as his master heard the words that his wife spoke to him, this is the way your servant treated me, his anger was kindled. You don't want to be get uh, in in. Uh, you, you don't want to get uh, angry with the um, with the head of the security in in uh, in the time. He has all the power. He has all the people that can uh, you know kill you, and you're not from. He's not from the, that place as well. He is a both possession by um, Potiphar. So he can do whatever he wants to him. And, you know, instead of doing things that is against, that can uh, end his life, he was thrown into prison. And from the prison experience itself, um, on Genesis 29, 30, it says, Joseph Master took him and put him into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in prison. It is the same prison where the kings picks prisoners to kill or set free when there's occasion. Like what happened to the chief butler, right? It is uh, during uh, um, Pero's birthday that he picked all the, the two um, prisoners. Um, he killed the chief butler and restored the uh, cupbearer. So God has been protecting Joseph from the first time that he was sold to the uh, Ishmaelites to the time that he was in prison. God has been protecting him from harm. And if God has been working in your life, God will use anyone to accomplish his purpose and his will in your life. Romans 19.17 says, For the scripture says to Pharaoh, for this very purpose I have raised you up, that I may show you my power, that I may, might show my power in you, and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Even Pharaoh is subject to God. Even Satan himself is subject to God. 
I, I'd like to pause here because if you know the depth of the scripture, that there are people that are used for God for his glory. It says in the Bible that there's a, the maker has a, you know, a vessels for honor and a vessels for uh, the other, everything else for sacrifice. Aren't you glad? I want to remind you that God has picked you for his honor and for his glory. He didn't pick you to be like Pero, Pero, to that he was raised to show his power, to show God's power. You know, Pero has been consumed by God to show his power, but he saved us, saved you and me to show his mercy. And the other thing is when God is at work in your life, people will know it. Genesis 39, 3, 4 says, His master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hand. So Joseph found in his favor in his sight and attended him and made him overseer over his house and put him in charge of all that he had. Genesis uh, 20, 39, 21 also says, But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him his steadfast love and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. So the first verse is uh, on Potiphar's house. This one is on, uh, on the prison. And also, I don't have it here. Genesis 41, 38 says, Pharaoh says to his servants, Can we find a man, man like this in whom is the Spirit of God? Aren't you glad? that God has given us his spirit, that he's given us the seal that people will know that we have been with Jesus. And that, that is my confidence here as well, standing in front of you, that I know God will going to honor his word, that I'm just to be here to be obedient to, to what uh, Pastor Al told me to do, and God will do the rest. Experiences in life at times may feel that everything is against us. You know, the, ex the experience of uh, Joseph's father, Jacob. But in fact, God is working on our behalf. So at this time, Joseph was 30 years old when he entered the service of Pharaoh. That, that means 13 years God has been working on Joseph's life. 13 years has been, God has been protecting him from all the harm and also blessing him and giving him favor in all that he does. Number four, God is working on his brother's life for the great task God have from them. Remember, you know, the uh, Joseph's family hate, uh, hate him. There's divisions, uh, even um, with Rachel and Le Leah, there's division as well. And during the time that they are been working, um, the experience that they have with Joseph, God is working on, on their life. God is transforming them. At, but at first, you know, they haven't found their repentance yet. Uh, Joseph brothers give us the picture of the difference between regret and repentance. Oftentimes, people are filled with regret because they have been found out in their sin. Their sorrow is not godly sorrow that leads to repentance. It is an expression of the pain of being exposed. Undoubtedly, the brothers regretted the deeds done to Joseph, but their regret had not yet turned into repentance. If you, uh, it's not here, if you uh, go to Genesis 40 to 21, it says, that they said to one another, in truth, we are, gu 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 we are guilty concerning our brother, and that we saw to the distress of his soul, when he begged us, we did not listen. This is why this distress has come upon us. So when they are in the, in the um, um, face of Joseph, and Joseph trying to um, blame them or, or, or put um, something on them, uh, trying to tell them that they're spies, the, the, the uh, siblings are talking, you know, this is happening to us because of what they did to him. Of course, uh, they thought that Joseph doesn't understand them because of their language, but uh, Joseph uh, and Joseph as interpreter um, talking to them, 
but he understand them. Also, Genesis 45, 3 says, Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. When he finally like, revealed to him, uh, them himself, Is my father still alive? But his brothers were, were speechless, for they were stunned and dismayed by Joseph's presence. Even then, you know, when they know that Joseph is alive, the repentance hasn't come to them. But Joseph, through the providence of God, would bring these brothers from a plateau of regret to the pinnacle of repentance and true sorrow of doing wrong. And God would use them in the founding of his great nation, Israel. So this happens like on, on the end uh, chapter, uh, Genesis 50, 15 to 21. Uh, when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, It may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. So they sent a message to Joseph saying, Your father gave this command before he died. Say, Joseph, please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin because they did evil to you. And now please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Jo Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph, Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for, I, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear, I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke with them kindly. So when all these things happen, before all these things happen, Joseph has already forgiven his brothers and sisters. He already like forget the, uh, the hardship that he has. And when these things came, you know, he is ready to forgive them. You know, sometimes uh, in our experience in life, it is those experiences those sin that we did before, it is the one that bringing us into a situation that we cannot, we can't be happy, we can't, um, we can enjoy the blessings of God in us. Do, do you have like experiences in life that you know cause you to, to um, the cause uh, wounds in your life? Or maybe something that, uh, that you did that caused, you know, sorrow to your family. Or anything that you're, that's happening right now in your life that uh, can cause pain in your life. We heard in these uh, passages that God is in control in everything. God is in working on the situation on your behalf. Maybe God is working on your daughters or sisters, your uh, husband, your daughter. We know that. We can say amen to that. But can you say to yourself that did you forgive them already? Even before they come to you and ask for forgiveness. Did you forgive them? Are you ready to accept them? Are you ready for, to forgive them with all of your heart? Our key passage today, you know, it, it is an expression of how we should deal with these um, experiences in life. That we should always remember that God is the one who causes us to forgive. It is the one that God, uh, God is the one who causes us to, to be successful in everything that we do. So that if we encounter and experience the things in life that is not favorable to us, we are quick and ready to forgive and to accept those who wronged us. Amen. Number five, God is working in Joseph's life for the great task God has for him. From the very beginning, he recognized that God is with him that he causes him to be successful in everything that he does. And so, you know, in all or whatever situation he was in, he is ready to, uh, to help, he's ready to, um, 
to be used uh, by the people around him, even as a slave, he was able to do it happily or, you know, in full service because he know that God is with him. He was unmovable with his love and trust for God. Whether he's on the pit or whether he's on the uh, a second um, in command in Egypt or in Potiphar's house. He was able to forgive his brothers because he made me forget all my hardship and all my father's house, Genesis 41, 51 says. It should be our heart today that whatever we did or whatever or whoever wronged us, when the time come, or even now, we should be always say, you know, I already forgive them. I already, uh, I'm ready to accept them because God has made me forget all the sufferings, all the hardship that is caused to me. And he was able to fulfill God's calling in his life to save life and preserve his family because for God made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. Genesis 41, 52 says. So all the success in life that we have, even where we are right now, even in a good example is my family. We know that it is from the Lord. The hardship that we um, encountered before is nothing compared to the uh, blessings that we are, uh, that God has given us today. So even, you know, but even, even if we are in a sweet situation, that there's nothing in this world that will going to give us experience those things that we want in life. Be confident and look forward for the price that we have when we meet our Savior Christ, Jesus Christ. When we are in His glory, all this hardship will be nothing compared to it. The Bible says that we set our, uh, our eyes on the price to be with Jesus our Lord and Savior forevermore, right? Uh, the time we have in this life is but a bay for. We can be here today and gone tomorrow. I, I, um, I'm just checking, like, you know, Facebook pages of people posting loved ones, leaving them, going away, you know, dying. And the question I have for myself is, or not a question, my prayer that I have myself for, my, for them is, I pray that they know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Because even if you stay in this world for 100, 200 years, nobody reaches 200, by the way, it is nothing compared to the eternity that we have after this life. It's going to be, you know, eternity away from the Lord or eternity in His presence. So in Joseph's life right now, I mean, on this, um, the, the text that we read, by the way, this is just an overview. With all the experience that we ha he has, all the hardship that he has, at the end, you know, the, the way he recalled God's goodness in his life is by naming his son Manasseh and Ephraim. And they became forefathers of the two of the 12 tribes of Israel. So before I, I end this uh, message, I'd like to um, ask you right now. Is God is calling you right now? Especially to those people, you know, that has uh, accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. I know you are eager to serve the Lord. And it doesn't matter how, um, how young or how uh, advanced in age you are. God can still use you. But what you do, can do is position yourself like Joseph to be in God's favor and blessing by feeding yourself with his word, prayer, and waiting for his appointed time. If you're part of the ministry, give yourself 100% fully to that ministry. Serve the Lord through that ministry. And you can apply this as well even in your 
um, work situation. If you want to get promoted, whatever position you're in, give yourself 100% to that position. Work as if you're working for the Lord. And because God is the one who promotes. Our, our manager, our, um, our supervisor, everything, they will be used by God to promote us. But it's not their calling. The second one that I would like to uh, uh, talk about is right now, right now, are you in the midst of trials and tribulations in your life? Are you in the pit like Joseph experienced before? Be encouraged today that God is in control. Even in the pit that has supposed to be water, God miraculously or probably at the time, you know, it is empty. There's no water on it. God uh, protected Joseph even from the prison, spared his life, and even gave him success. Do past life mistakes, sin, or offense prevent you from fulfilling God's calling in your life right now? Be, just, be like Joseph. You know, acknowledge that whatever you, ha- you are, wherever you are right now, is from the Lord. The successes that you have li- right now is from the Lord. Even the trials and tribulations that you have right now is appointed by God to shape you, to change you so that you'll be in a position that God wants you to be when the time comes. You will be ready. And so as I end this message, I know there's a lot of things that we can glean and uh, learn from uh, this uh, life of Joseph. Because if you, if you look at it, it is very important. What, whatever, uh, you know, um, experience that the, the, he has during that time actually preserved the generations of um, his family, the 12 tribes of Israel. So God basically used him in that uh, situation to preserve the, uh, the tribes of Israel. So whatever your situation right now, if it is bad or good, just look on the price which God has called us to be. We know that God has a good thing in store for us, that even if we don't receive it in this, uh, in, in this earth right now, in this place, we know that you know the end is going to be uh, glorious to be in the presence of the Lord. But, you know, I, I, before I end this message as well, I'd like to know, because we have like new um, people comes in here, that Joseph's life didn't uh, came to him because of his ability, because, because of his knowledge, because of his um, relationship to anyone, any government official or anything but it's because of his relationship with the Lord. So if you are here today, you know, maybe you're on the top of your career or maybe you're experiencing difficulties in life, only God can help you. And you can do that by accepting him and knowing him as your personal Lord and Savior. God, uh, I mean, Pastor Al, two weeks ago, spoke about the, you know, the, the, the gospel message if you have time, uh, find us on Facebook and, and hear about that message. But I'd like you to encourage everyone to put God you know, in your life, to, to, to receive him, to know that you need him, that everyone needs him. Even Joseph at that time, you know, things that he cannot do, he was able to do it because of the Lord. It is only God who empowers him. It is only God who protected him. And it's only God who put it on the top to accomplish the, the uh, purpose and the will that he has in his life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your words. Thank you, Lord God, for opening our hearts and our mind to receive, Lord, your message unto us. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters today, Lord. In whatever situation they are in life right now, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, by your Holy Spirit that they 
that they will know, Lord, that it is only you who can make the difference. It is only you, Lord God, who can change the situation. But most of all, Lord God, it is only you who, could, who can change us, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that whatever situation we're in right now, Lord, change us, Father God. Help us, Lord, see Jesus in every situation that we are in. And that, Lord, we know that it will going to uh, create in us, Lord, the heart that is uh, longing for you, Lord, that is dependent on you, Father God. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters today, Lord, that this message be um, penetrate their hearts, Lord God, because it is your word, Lord God. And as we end this message, Lord God, I pray for blessings upon them. I pray blessings for each one of us, Lord, and protection for this uh, coming week. And also pray, Lord God, for our pastor, Pastor Al and Sister Rella, as they stayed in the Philippines, Lord, for your guidance and protection, Lord God. And thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity that we can share on the wedding of uh, John uh, in the Philippines as well, Lord, and Nikki. And I pray, Lord God, that the words that they shared will penetrate the, uh, the hearts of the people there, there as well, Lord, and cause them, Lord, to, to look for you, to find you. And we thank you, Lord God, that if we do that, Lord, that we'll, we will find you. Lord, I'll bless you today. I worship you. I honor you. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.